and pleasure to be in Qatar. Thank you for inviting me to ask you Qatar. And just a quick outline on uh, my presentation. It's, uh, it's quite long, so I'll just stick to the first six or seven slides in the interest of time. But it's, uh, as our advisors, we, we are about statistics and research, so it will be research and statistics heavy. Start with this table about internet use penetration in Arab countries. And if you notice, uh, a country like Bahrain, internet use penetration is 26%, Kuwait 34%, uh, Saudi Arabia 31%, UAE 68%, Jordan 16%, and so on. That's internet users, not internet accounts, which are basically our estimates based on how many people use the same ADSL connection or uh, uh, cable TV connection uh, and similarly. Now, what this tells us is that there is a huge uh, inter-country gaps between the penetration in the Arab countries, uh, between the countries themselves, and uh, also the, the, these numbers disguise the fact that also within the countries you have digital divides. Uh, for example, in Jordan, 90% of broadband connections are actually in the capital city of Amman, which has less than 50% of the population. Similarly, in Egypt, the situation uh, replicates itself across uh, uh, the, the middle-income and poor countries in the region. In the Gulf states, uh, most are uh, wealthy, uh, small city-states, and therefore this, this issue is, is, uh, is not as accurate as in, in other countries. Now, with, with the relatively low internet users penetration in the Arab world, that the information revolution in the Arab world has actually been uh, fueled by a 70s technology. I think that it was satellite TV that gave the Arab world its own information revolution rather than the internet. Uh, although this is quickly changing as more broadband uh, penetration and broadband levels increase in the, in the Arab countries. When we ask internet users, Arab internet users, or rather internet users in the Arab world, uh, because many of them are not, are not Arabic, especially in the Gulf. Uh, what they use the internet for, email and searching for news information are the most widely used amongst the internet users in the Arab world, they have to correct this. Uh, followed by downloading files and software, chatting, and comes ahead of streaming audio and video. Uh, streaming audio and video is probably uh, not as popular here simply because of the bandwidth dearth uh, in the Arab region. Uh, we still define broadband connections in the Arab world as 512 kilobits per second or 256 kilobits per second. Whereas the norm now in a typical European house, Western European house, is to bundle cable TV, telephony, and 8 megabit broadband internet at 50 or 60 euros a month. Uh, in the Arab world, in many countries, 60 euros a month is what you pay for 256 kilobits per second. Uh, the solution for that is more liberalization, uh, more regulators like ICT Qatar introducing competition, and using liberalization and connecting the Arab world uh, uh, globally. Of course, when you, when you compare and contrast what data users they do compared to broadband users, broadband users tend to spend more time doing the value-added uh, issues uh, of internet use. Uh, basically, <coughs> e-commerce, e-banking, e-government, much more widely used by broadband users than by the Arab users, which further underlines the need for more broadband adoption in the Arab region. Uh, I will not bore you with our survey details. We did some surveys in Qatar, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Egypt, and Bahrain, to name a few of the countries where we did face-to-face uh, -face surveys of users. Uh, basically, the, the, the digital divide is, is vividly present here with the fact that when you ask Cellular users, whether they use the internet, a high pro pro proportion of cellular users use the internet. So what you have usually in Arab countries is that uh, people who use the internet to tend to also use cellular use, uh, uh, the cellular services, and so on. And uh, so the penetration levels overlap, which means that huge portions of the population, especially in, in poorer countries, don't have access to any of these technologies. Uh, more males than females use the internet in the Arab world. The young, of course, use the internet more than the old. That's uh, pretty straightforward. This could come from the research from the institute uh, to research obvious matters. And of course, TV is uh, basically this is still TV land. They are both. Most people watch TV. 
the information age, the newspaper revolution, spirited actually by Al Jazeera, would not have happened without uh, free-to-air satellite TV. And when it comes to free-to-air satellite TV, uh, pay TV in the Arab world has had a very poor showing for multiple reasons. Uh, the first of which is, uh, this is the, one of the few regions in the world, probably the, the, the only region in the world where people can get a $70 uh, free-to-air satellite TV receiver and actually get great sports content, great uh, entertainment series and mini series and comedy shows, all through free-to-air satellite TVs that are backed by uh, deep pockets, be it the government or uh, private shareholding uh, groups that want to have quality TV that's uh, not paid. So the pay TV operators in the Arab world suffer from competition from free-to-air satellite channels as well for, as from rampant uh, piracy, especially in countries like Lebanon and Egypt where a good 80% of pay TV connections are actually pirated pay TV connections. I have many more slides. I think it would be better for just uh, for all of us to uh, skip into the uh, uh, the, uh, the discussion and the discussion. So I'll end on this, and I thank you very much for your attention.